Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. Also, do me a favor and please hit that like button if you will. So, Summer Wells mother, Candace Bly, has been back doing lives on her besties YouTube channel and last night on her own YouTube channel. If you didn't catch her live yesterday, let me just say that it was a train wreck. I checked this morning and it appears that Candace took that video down. She did, however, leave a strange 20 second video in which she makes faces for the camera. That brief video does give a hint as to what the five minute video was like. Take a listen to a snippet from the longer five minute video. Hey everyone, how's everybody doing tonight? Well, I'm hoping everything is, everyone is doing okay tonight. We're probably going crazy. Summer's mom, Candace, sounds pretty messed up, right? Inebriated, perhaps? Definitely on something. Note that the day before on her besties YouTube channel, she told him that she had been off alcohol for three weeks. The look on his face showed that even he was skeptical of that statement. But he did try hard to be her sober buddy and give her sound advice on how to stop drinking. He also offered her the opportunity to go skydiving. Apparently, Candace has an adventurous soul and she wants to jump out of an airplane. But Candace doesn't want to go skydiving alone. She wants to go with her bestie, if you know what I mean. After watching Candace slur her way through those five minutes last night, I began to think that maybe the best thing that could happen to her, let's say if she is found to have something to do with Summer's disappearance, is maybe to go to prison. Hear me out before you jump all over me. I believe her mother, Candy Har, is there still at Ben Hill Road. And while I want to say to Candy, now is the time for you to step in and get your daughter help. I know that parents of adult children with addictions don't necessarily have the power, ability, or the responsibility to fix their adult children. Only Candace can fix Candace. Grandis raised Candace, and I'm not sure who Grandis really is on the inside. She may also have a problem. We don't know because we haven't seen that much of Grandis. Even parents who are loving, caring, attentive, and who give their all sometimes have children who pick up heroin needles or try meth and suddenly find themselves with an insidious addiction. And the parents can try everything their financial means allows them to do. Rehab, after rehab, after rehab. And still that child may be unable to get off these heartless drugs. And many families know the never-ending ache 
of losing a child to accidental drug overdoses. Provisional data from the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics indicate that there were more than 100,000 drug overdose deaths in the United States during a 12-month period ending in April of 2021. Overdose deaths from opioids increased to 75,673 in the 12-month period ending in April 2021. In fact, overdose deaths from methamphetamine, cocaine, and prescription pain medication also increased. And let's not forget about alcohol. 95,000 Americans die every year from its effects. We can't put the burden on the parents of grown adults to be responsible for the behavior of their adult children. I know because I know someone who suffered from a drug addiction despite having loving parents who did not have alcohol slash drug problems themselves. Parents who tried every intervention they could think of. That person ended up doing what a lot of people with addictions do. They broke the law. Note that you're hearing me say they as a singular, and I'm doing that to avoid having to use he or she. After stealing anything of value from the friends and family around them, this person got desperate for more heroin and decided to rob some grocery stores, although this was done without a weapon. This person made it appear that they had one. When the police caught up with this person, they charged this person with three counts of armed robbery for the three grocery stores robbed. Security cameras catch nearly everything we do in public spaces. This person landed in prison for 10 years. The only good things that came out of that prison for this person are, one, they got off heroin and have never done it since. Two, they've never broken the law since. The bad things that came from the prison stay are, one, the person is not the same one who went in the doors of the prison. Prison hammered this person down emotionally and physically. Two, this person had to detox in jail without any medical assistance, without any care, which had to have been pure hell. And three, no one has ever wanted to hire this person since and give this person a second chance. Second chances for people convicted of violent felonies like armed robbery and worse are few and far between. They usually don't get the luxury of being recognized as having served their time. Still, I think if Candace Bly is unwilling to accept a stay in a rehab facility from Dr. Phil, which is what I heard the show offered, both Don and Candace, the only route out of her issues may be prison. And I would say that would be the only safe route because by the looks of it, seeing her last night, she's in a very bad way. And we don't want anything to happen to Candace because we might then never find out what really happened. I know people can get drugs and alcohol behind bars, but I think you need money in your canteen for that, or at least some sort of trading, bartering power. Candace's live was really terribly sad. She's sitting there all alone. Her daughter hasn't been seen in more than eight months. Her boys are gone, thankfully, removed by Child Protective Services and her troubled husband, Don Wells, is in jail. Candace appears lonely and seems to be looking for friends and a connection through her YouTube channel. Sadly, the people who seem most to listen to her are people who want to tell her how great she is, how good she looks, how proud they are of her. A few offer advice like, you look down tonight, Candace. You need to take care of yourself. Those perhaps well-meaning people seem to keep forgetting about Summer and Candace's unwillingness to be frank and honest with investigators 
and to tell what really happened to the five-year-old. Those people seem to forget about how Candace's, H's, and now Grandis's stories about June 15th don't match. Why don't they match? Now listen to the rest of Candace's five-minute live from yesterday. Erratic comments from an erratic mind. And did you hear that one comment in there? I will never do anything against my kids again. What does that mean? Okay, well, that's all I have for the moment tonight on the Summer Wells case. Please do me a favor and hit that like button on the way out. Subscribe, share, and comment. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Thank you.